Welcome to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. I'm very excited to be with you today because it's my birthday. My 72nd birthday, to be more specific. And I guess we're all pretty glad to be around for our 72nd birthday. Every birthday gets more and more precious, don't they? But yes, I am thrilled and delighted to be here with you today on this particular birthday, because I got to tell you, when I was young, you know, I was born in 1950. Back in the 50s, you thought of people in their 70s as old, really old. <laughs> and I didn't even think about what life would be like in my 70s or how I would feel in my 70s. But I am thrilled to tell you that for many reasons, a lot of different reasons, some of which I'm going to share with you today, life in my 70s is pretty darn great. It's really something very special. So I thought since it is my birthday and it is my show, <laughs> and back in my day, the song that was very popular was, it's my party and I'll cry if I want to, cry if I want to. <laughs> well, I'm not crying, but it is my party. So I decided on my birthday, I would just do a show about me because I'm always interviewing other people and I'm always helping you to get to know them. So I thought, well, maybe I'll just do that for myself today. So I hope you will hang with me and, uh, and enjoy these sharings because I've never done this before. But I thought it might be fun. And one of the things that I want to do more of this year on this show, Change It Up Radio, is share more of myself. I've been inspired by a guy named Raj Jana that I met at the Bottle Rock Music Festival in Napa, where, as you know, I was invited by Podopolo, the latest and greatest podcast platform, to be part of their festival there at the Bottle Rock Music Festival. And Raj does something every month that he calls a Reflections Show. And in that show, he talks about other shows that he did that month and some of the things he's learned and how they impacted his life. And I really love that idea. And since my goal this year is really to grow this show and to bring you really first class quality information to help you in your own life, then I decided that part of growing this show should be us getting to know each other better. So I'm going to be putting more time into the Facebook group, the Change It Up Radio Facebook group, answering questions and having dialogues with people who come to that page. And in shows, I want to do more sharing of my own thinking and, and experiences I've had in my own life because Let's face it, I've been on the planet 72 years now. I've had some things happen, and I'm happy to say I've learned some things that have been very valuable. So for any of you who are new to the show today, I am Paula Shaw. I am the author of three books, which I will share with you right now. The first one was called Chakras, the Magnificent Seven. And it's kind of a primer to how to balance the chakras. It gives you basic information about what the chakras are all about, what parts of body, mind, and spirit they relate to, and how to work with them to keep them in balance for your highest good. And that's really important. My second book was called Grief, When Will This Pain Ever End? I am a grief or what we now refer to as life transition expert. This has been the core of my work for 29 years. So whether that, that transition came from a divorce, a death, um, a, a health challenge, a move, loss of a job, 
any kind of loss creates that life transition. And whenever we're in change, we've lost something. And all loss ultimately creates grief. So I think it's really important that we gain effective tools for dealing with our loss and our grief. So that's what I talk about in grief. When will this pain ever end? And it's not a book you have to read from cover to cover. Because one thing I know about grieving people, they have a hard time focusing. They have a hard time keeping their thoughts clear and sharp because they're grieving. They're in the right brain where the emotion is being experienced. So the way that book works is the chapters are short and they're followed by articles and tools and processes that you can choose even randomly to practice. Because what I learned about grief when I was in such a tough grief experience of my own, when my family dog of 14 years and my former husband, the father of my children, died within a month of each other. And I realized during that grief journey, you've got to do something every single day to work on your grief, or it will overcome you and consume you and you'll get stuck in it. You won't get to the other side. Even if that's something you do is what I call a gratitude walk. Just get outside. Just do something where you're appreciating. Gratitude's a high vibration. It's a great way to shift your energy. So do a gratitude walk or go do something to be of service for someone else. That can be a great way of shifting out of your loss and your sadness. But this book is a book that I wrote after going through that grief experience so that I could share with others some of the tools that I found most effective. And finally, my latest book, Saying the Right Thing When You Don't Know What to Say. This one also came out of my experience of having too many people tell me no one called, no one came by, no one even said anything about my loss. And I know that while that causes a lot of pain to the person going through the loss, the people that care about that person, they are not trying to hurt anybody. They just feel so inadequate to say the right thing and they don't want to make it worse. So they just avoid the encounter. And that does sometimes make it worse. In fact, it often makes it worse. So I thought, all right, I'm going to put together a little book of do's and don'ts, helping people know to know what to say and what not to say and what to do and what not to do. So that's saying the right thing when you don't know what to say. And of course, all of those books are available on Amazon. In addition to being an author, I am a speaker and I speak on these topics. I speak on dealing with life transitions, transitions, huh? dealing with change, um, you know, relationships, communication, all of those things are really part of effectively taking care of ourselves when we're dealing with those life transitions. And that transition can happen at the office. It can happen in a relationship. It can happen at home. It can happen anywhere. Change is the one thing we can count on always happening. And finally, I am a life transition coach. I work with people one-on-one. -on -one dealing with changes in life that they may need some help with. Because as we all know, sometimes the change is so big or it's so dramatic or so painful that we just need help in getting through it. And that's the other area of my work. So if you would like to learn more about any of those areas of my work, you can go to paulashaw.com and while you're there, grab my free gift, which is a list of 20 things to say and not to say to people who are dealing with emotional pain. It's a great cheat sheet to have in your glove box or your purse so that if and when that person you love is hurting and you need to have a conversation with them, 
you can do a little quick review and then feel much more confident and competent in having that conversation. Also, if you want to learn more about this show or about being a guest or a sponsor of this show, or you want to hear past shows or read the show notes, if there's someone you really love and you want to know more about them, you can find all of that on changeitupradio.com. That's changeitupradio.com. All right. So as I said, it's my birthday. I've been on the planet 72 years and I've learned a few things and I, I, there are some things I'd like to share with you. So first of all, I thought it'd be kind of fun to look at what are some of the major lessons I gained in the last year. And I have to say first and foremost is the value of family. I am blessed with one of the greatest families ever. My mom and dad are still in my life. They're in their 90s, and they obviously have been in my life all of my 72 years. And they were wonderful parents when I was growing up. But I think the experience just got even richer in my adult years. Uh, we have wonderful conversations. I feel they support me 150%. They're probably the only two people on the planet who have listened to every one of my podcasts. <laughs> and they're always there. What can I say? They're always there. I can call any time of night or day and that phone will be picked up and they will really be interested in what's going on in my life and what I have to say. So that is the first part of my family I'm so grateful for. Uh, my brother, Craig and I um, together had one of the highlight experiences of my life. When we were in our 20s, we traveled all over the United States in a truck and camper, and we were gone a little over three months. And we just, it was just an adventure every day. We were never exactly sure where we were going. We always had a general plan, but we were just open to wherever the wind took us. And it was a monumental, wonderful experience, I think, for both of us. And we are fortunately still in each other's lives in a wonderful way. His wife, Marilyn, and his daughter, Jenna, and his two sons, Patrick and Chris, are all a big part of my life still. I adore them all. Chris married Jamie, and they created one of the world's most wonderful children, Brielle. And Jenna married Eric, and they created the world's other most wonderful child, and that is Giada, my two great nieces. So that's all really wonderful. My sister, Leslie, and I have, well, been on the planet a long time together, and we support each other, we love each other unconditionally, and I feel blessed that there is nobody in my family that I don't feel connected to in a really powerful way. And that is pretty darn amazing. And then, of course, the picture was rounded out with my own two children, Aaron and Casey. And uh, Aaron is 37 years old, Casey is 34. And they truly are the light of my light. And the thing that I learned this year that's most important about family is even though sometimes we get really ticked off at each other or we may hate each other's ideas or each other's politics, and yeah, we've been there, but we don't throw each other away. We don't stop loving each other or relating to each other, or standing up for each other, even when there are disagreements. And this summer, I went through a very, very unexpected and painful experience in a situation where I thought I was going to have relaxation and joy and a wonderful spiritual experience. But instead, I was misperceived in a situation that I have 
no real understanding about, and I was thrown away. A friendship of many years was just like thrown away, and I felt kind of disowned. And it was so painful and so difficult for me that what it did do for me was really make me appreciate those relationships that are part of my life where I don't get thrown away, even if I blow it, even if I make a really bad joke or, or I take a position nobody likes, even if I say something offensive, I don't get thrown away. I may get called out, and God knows my children are both excellent at that. <laughs> I may get called out, which gives me the opportunity to apologize, but I don't get cast out. And that's huge. And so if you're as lucky as I am to have family and friends who hang with you, even when you blow it, then say your prayers and say thank you. Because that is a gift, a huge gift, a huge gift. Another really powerful learning that came out of this year for me is realizing that my story is my story. My story doesn't have to be my parents' story or my sibling's story or even my ancestors' story. And we do know now because of the field of epigenetics that we do tend to inherit genetically the signatures of how our ancestors or predecessors responded to life. But even though we come in with that genetic load, still, in every moment of our lives, we're at choice. We still get to decide what we want to keep and what we want to let go of. And all we need to do is do the work, find the awareness, and do the work to let go of it. And it's not that hard. It's just remembering you are a separate being. I know there's a lot of fear in the world today that, oh, my mother had breast cancer or my father had a bad heart. That's probably going to happen to me. No, it doesn't need to. Your body is your body. Your story is your story. It doesn't matter what happened to the others because you are an energy being. We're actually more electrical energy than we are matter. And we guide that energy. We tell that energy how we'd like it to show up. That's the power of setting an intention. Telling the energy how you would like it to show up. So never forget how powerful you are. Your story is the story you choose to create. Even though sometimes things happen to us that we don't feel like we chose and we don't like the way it feels and what's happening, we still get to choose how we respond to it. We still get to choose whether we run with the negativity and the pain of it or we decide that we're going to be joyful and peaceful in spite of it. So remember, your story is your story. That was a huge learning for me this year as well. And finally, this the last piece that was huge for me this year happened after that painful experience that I described a little bit earlier. I was still agonizing about it and I sat down with a very wise friend of mine and, and a coach, Ellen McCarty. And after telling Ellen the whole story and her expressing how shocked she was that I would be so misperceived because most people seem to know who I am and, and that is who I am. But then she sat thoughtfully for a moment and she said, hmm, I think what I'm finally left with is when I really know who I am, when I know that with total certainty, others pe other people's perceptions don't really have to impact me at all. Think about that. When I really know who I am, 
other people's perceptions of me have not, may have nothing to do with who I am. It's just their perceptions. Boy, if I had had that reality, that insight, when I was in the midst of the painful experience, it could have changed everything. So I share it with you today. When you're really solid about who you are, when you know where your heart is, when you know what you're on the planet for and what you stand for and what you believe, if other people perceive you differently, oh well, walk away and stand tall. Do not let that devastate you. Do not let that anger you. It's just their perception. And we're all different, aren't we? We all came to the planet through different experiences. We all have different beliefs. We had different parents. We had different rules we grew up with. And that's what creates our perceptions. And so how you perceive something may have nothing to do with its reality. And that's the thing that came so clearly and strongly to me through Ellen's words. So I was misperceived. And I went through a lot of pain because of that group misperception. But you know what? I'm proud to say I showed up every day at this particular event as my best self. And I contributed in the best way I knew how to. And so sitting back and looking at it all now, I can find the growth. And I can find a feeling of gladness and satisfaction and maybe even feeling a little bit proud of myself that I still showed up as my best self in spite of the hurt and the pain that I was experiencing. And so I encourage you to do the same because you know what? In the end, the only thing that matters really is how you feel about yourself, how you feel you showed up. And if you did the best you could, we're not responsible, nor can we control how other people perceive us. That's not our responsibility. Our responsibility is just to show up authentically and be our best self and give in the best way that we can. And that's how we make an experience as bright and as meaningful and as filled with value as it can be. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of an old poem that many of you may know um, that, that I think is so important. And I'm going to share that with you in just a moment. But first, I want to share with you three questions that I recently heard uh, a speaker who was at the LifeWave conference. And many of you know the LifeWave phototherapy patches, the stem cell activating patches are like my faves. You know, I've been using them for going on four years now. And those stem cells have done a lot to keep me looking and feeling youthful. So I'm very grateful for them. But at the conference, a gal named Danielle Donahue gave a presentation I thought was excellent. And she said at one point in it, I have three questions to ask you that can change your life. And I want to share those three questions with you all. The first question was, what do you want? What do you want to have or create? Question number one, what do you want to have or create in your life? Question number two, why haven't you done it already? <laughs> Huge, right? And question number three, who loses if you don't win? Who loses if you don't win? So what do you want to create in your life, whether that's a million dollars or a legacy a, work, a body of work that you want people to know about, or whether it's just a beautiful memories people have of you as a loving, giving person, whatever it is you want to create, identify it. 
sit down and write it out, whether it's in your business or in your personal life or wherever. And then ask yourself the tough question. Why haven't you done it already? What has stopped you from doing it already? And I would tend to bet that 90% of the time, it's about fear. We're either afraid of the things we'd have to do to get where we want to get, or we're afraid of how we'll be perceived by others, or we're afraid that we're not enough, we're not smart enough, pretty enough, talented enough, or whatever, to actually achieve that thing we dream about. Fear. But if fear stops you from ever taking a shot, then for sure you will fail. You won't get what you wanted. So it's kind of like, what the hell? Give it a shot. Give it a shot. Because if you don't, well, for sure, you won't get it. You will fail. So I thank Danelle Donahue for planting that seed in my head. And again, it reminded me of this, of an old poem by Oriah Mountain Dreamer that many of you will remember. Many people think that the quote came from Nelson Mandela, but in actuality, it came from a paragraph in Marianne Williamson's book, Return to Love. So in closing this show today, and in closing my 71st year and welcoming my 72nd year, during which I'm going to strive to love myself more, accept myself more, share my truth more, be the most authentic person I can be, and not worry about how other people perceive me. Because one of the things Danelle said in her talk was, even if people view your page and say terrible things to you about what you've posted on social media, you still got a view. You still got another view. So you win. And I think that's kind of the way to look at this whole thing, isn't it? That no matter what happens to you, if you look from that perspective, you will always find that you won. You either won growth, you won a new insight, you won a lesson, you won something. So I intend this to be a year of winning, winning. No matter what life presents me, I'm going to win. So I want to share with you here in closing this show two poems that I remember from my youth because they were both written by Oriah Mountain Dreamer. And I always thought that was a publishing company. But in doing my research today, I found out Oriah Mountain Dreamer is actually a person, a woman who changed her name to Oriah because of the meaning of it, that it meant light of God. And she felt that with the revelations she was having and the things she was learning, that was more appropriate. And in certain Native tra American traditions, they believe you need to change your name when you're trying to create a healing. Isn't that an interesting idea? Almost as though the illness or the condition is attached to the other name. So let's change that name while we're healing it. Interesting thought. So this is one called Our Deepest Fear. I was just saying that what mostly blocks us from having what we want in life on some level is some kind of fear. So let's take Marianne Williamson's words about fear and put them to work. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, famous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. 
There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Isn't that cool? I love that. I love it. And now I'm going to indulge myself, since it's my birthday, in reading you one other poem by Oriah Mountain Dreamer. And this one is actually written about from a woman who's looking for a relationship. And so I want to go on record as saying, I think now in my 72nd year, I'm finally actually open to having a relationship in my life. I think I needed to be alone a lot of years here so that I could really find me and give her airtime and, and learn to value her and not put her second because I'm in a relationship with a man. And when I read this, I thought, oh my goodness, this is like so perfect. I think this would be the perfect profile to put on um, an, an internet dating site if I really wanted someone to get a feeling for who I am and what I'm looking for. So I share it with you guys also as a way of sharing it with the world. And any man who might find an, the idea of a relationship with me interesting, okay, here's the heads up. It doesn't interest me what you do for a living. I want to know what you ache for. And if you dare to dream of meeting your heart's longing. It doesn't interest me how old you are. I want to know if you will risk looking like a fool for love, for your dream, for the adventure of being alive. It doesn't interest me what planets are squaring your moon. I want to know if you have touched the center of your own sorrow, if you have been opened by life's betrayals or have become shriveled and closed from fear of further pain. I want to know if you can sit with pain, mine or your own, without moving, to hide it or fade it or fix it. I want to know if you can be with joy, mine or your own. If you can dance with wildness and let the ecstasy fill you to the tips of your fingers and toes without cautioning us to be careful, be realistic, to remember the limitations of being human. It doesn't interest me if the story you're telling me is true. I want to know if you can disappoint another to be true to yourself. If you can bear the accusation of betrayal and not betray your own soul, I want to know if you can be faithless and therefore be trustworthy. I want to know if you can see beauty, even when it is not pretty every day, and if you can source your own life from its presence. I want to know if you can live with failure, yours and mine, and still stand on the edge of a lake and shout to the silver of the full moon, yes! It doesn't interest me to know where you live or how much money you have. I want to know if you can get up after the night of grief and despair, weary and bruised to the bone, and do what needs to be done for the children. It doesn't interest me who you are, how you came to be here, I want to know if you will stand in the center of the fire with me and not shrink back. It doesn't interest me where or what or with whom you have studied. I want to know what sustains you from the inside when all else falls away. I want to know if you can be alone with yourself and if you truly like the company you keep in the empty moments. 
That's what I want to know about somebody who's interested in having a relationship with me. So thank you all for indulging me in my birthday episode of Change It Up Radio. It was really fun getting to share some of my learnings and experiences with you. And I look forward to more of this in our Reflections episodes in the coming year. This fall, our whole fall season is going to be around the theme, Giants on the Road Less Traveled. And we are going to be interviewing some really interesting people who have had the guts to do something different and to step into their dreams. We'll be beginning next week with Chad Stewart, author of the Britfield series. We talked to Chad last year, but he's just about to release his third book in the series. And he's got a movie in the works, and he's got a play for school children that's written and being performed, and so much more. So please join us next week when we get into our fall series, Giants on the Road Less Traveled, right here on Change It Up Radio. Remember, you can hear us on every major podcast platform, including my favorite, the latest and greatest that offers you so many cool features, Podopolo. Don't miss that. And by the way, two of the giants we're going to be interviewing will be chairman of Podopolo, Steve Little, and CEO and founder, Melinda Whitstock. So hang with us this fall. We're going to have some wonderful, wonderful, insightful really truly educational shows and remember please to like us and subscribe to us so that we can grow this show and keep bringing you information that will help you handle change more effectively and more smoothly or shows that will be spotlighting change makers who are trying to make the world a better place thanks for being with me and I'll see you next week. Until then, take care. Be safe. Bye-bye.